Ooh. Five, four, three, two, one. Good. My brother, Ruben. Morning. Good morning. Hey, guys. Legend Barry. Oh, my God. What? Really? What? You think I don't know what? <clears throat> you guys. Yeah. Barney yeah. Stinson. If you know, then you know. What? Exactly. Anyhow, guys, good morning. I pray that you guys are having a blessed, blessed morning already. Yes. So, I wanted to, first things first, really, really quick. I wanted to give a shout out to, um, to Anthony's son, Joshua. It was his birthday, and when we had our paint night, he had a drive through birthday party and we were supposed to literally drive through right after paint night. <coughs> but guess what? Paint night took a lot longer than what we expected. Yeah, a horrible instructor. <laughs> Shut up. You know, um, it would be... Unfortunately, you know, we ended up getting to clean up and everything. We it was a lot well, of clean up. Well, we had to not only clean up but set it up for today's service, mm -hmm. which we didn't even say it. It's Sunday night for us. Monday morning for Monday you guys. morning for you guys. So, um, with that said, we're gonna sing Happy Birthday, Joshua. We are. So yes, we are. You ready? You're gonna sing with me. One, two, three, babe. Ready? One, two, three. Happy birthday hey, to you. you. I'm accompanying you. Happy birthday Bird to you. Happy birthday, birthday dear Joshua. You. You're so funny. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to, to you. you. All right, so I have something for you. So we still have to do a drive-by over there because I need Whoa, to... whoa, I ain't doing no drive-by stops. <laughs> if there's any any detectives watching this, I'm not doing a drive-by. I don't want to get indicted you again. You know what? We have to be careful with saying that because somebody can actually just take that little piece. Exactly, and you're saying it. It ain't coming come out of my mouth. A birthday drive-by. See how nervous I get when she says we're about to do a drive-by? <laughs> what are you trying to do? <laughs> Babe, birthday... Birthday drive by. Don't do that. Birthday drive mm -mm. Birthday drive Like that? No. I I'm going to do, I'm going <laughs> to drive by for your birthday. Like that? Yes. Federal and diamonds are not fun. <laughs> They're not fun at all. <sighs> okay. But the spreads are good and the Cadillacs are good. I will say that. Well, I make them actually better. The, the Cadillacs, that's for sure. Yeah. Okay. So, with that said, I will see you soon, young man. And happy birthday. I do pray that you had an amazing birthday. And I'm hoping that you were able to chime on in for um, the paint night, you know, when you were able to do some painting, which was um, a lot of fun. And if you weren't able to do it, go back to the video and do it now, you know. I, I didn't do it. I was taking pictures. So what I'm going to do, I just told David today that... I'm going to go back and I want to challenge myself and I'm actually going to do it by myself here and watch you do it. I'm going to do it again? Oh, on the video. Really? Scared me. <laughs> How many am I going to paint? No. Sheesh. I'm actually going to sit down and do it by myself here at home because I want to challenge myself to do it. I was like, you know what? I, I want to I want to see what it felt like for everybody else to do it. And I'm going to do it. So, and you know, I th I just thought it'd be fun for me to sit down and just do it and see what everybody else felt like. You know, yeah. that pressure. Everybody was like, gosh, that pressure. I was cracking up because um, Lorena's mom. Oh, I know. Lorena's mom, you guys. So she only talks Spanish. And so all I could see was that table. Everybody on that table was cracking up. And I'm like, why are they laughing so much? And all I can hear is her little voice saying, Otro color? Otro color? She kept saying, another color? Another color? Every time that he kept mixing colors. And she's like, another color? <laughs> you know? And they were just cracking up. So <clears throat> it was fun. I'm going to challenge myself and I'm going to do it. I didn't. It was supposed to be an hour and a half. 
no, no, actually, if it took you one hour, that meant that the class was two hours. That's that's how long did it last? Two and a half? Two and a half hours. So yeah. if 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 it usually takes the instructor about an hour for him to do a painting in an hour, like you know, like literally, then that means the class can be up to two hours. So because you have to give yourself breaks, especially if it's a whole landscape or something like that, then you have like two or three breaks in between because you gotta yeah. allow acrylic to dry in between. Um and you have, it was a large class, guys, because apart from just being um, the the class there, this was online. We had, like, seriously, we had a whole production going on because you had, in between, not only were we doing just one camera, you had three cameras going, guys. You had the, the middle camera. You had the side camera with the side view, and then you had the camera where he was going back and forth where he was doing the close-ups for you guys. So the middle camera was actually the main camera that was for the people that were there. No, the middle camera was OBS. Oh, for OBS? Okay, and then the <clears throat> other camera was for the people that were there. And then he had um, the close-up camera that was to give the people that were online um, a close-up of what he was doing every time and then he'd walk around and show you guys a little visual of what everybody was doing and that's that's like a full-on little production for you guys you know so that was really cool because we wanted to give you guys um a feeling of family of you guys being there with us and i think that was so important for you guys to be able to just kind of really feel like you guys were part of all of this because you are part of this and that's important for us. Yeah. So it didn't matter. <clears throat> to us, it did not matter the extra work, putting in that extra work or any of that. Um, because we wanted to make sure that everybody felt like you guys were a part of this. Well, I did talk to a few people that did the painting online, not in person. But they showed up to service today. And um, I actually, um, Angelica, Jose, mm -hmm. Alex. Mm -hmm. Well, they didn't do the painting, but they watched but Alex did do the mm -hmm. painting with, with his daughter. So my question to them was, how was it? Did it help me using my cell phone to walk around in? Mm -hmm. And they're like, man, that made a huge difference because it made them feel like they were there. Because yeah. had, the, had the camera just been on me, it's like they're not sharing with the experience of the whole group. You yeah, know? yeah. And one of the brothers, I think was it Jose, he's like, how did you do that? Like, how did you hook up your phone to the computer like that, to be able to switch back and forth, you know? And I'm like, I just did it, you know? And he's like, is it an app? Is it sort of an app and it's something on the PC? And so, like, uh, I think um, Adam, today, when I quickly went back there to fix the camera, the mic since I wasn't preaching, mm -hmm. he's like, man, thank God uh, our, sh our shepherd is a techie or something like that. <laughs> You know, I love technology, guys, so I'm always going to try to be on top of everything. I'm really grateful. I'm really grateful, too, you know, because, um, man, Abraham's a blessing, too, guys, mm -hmm. you know, because yesterday was his best friend's <clears throat> birthday, um, and he had left early, and he says, oh, they're having a dinner for him at his house. His birthday's and actually tomorrow, huh? Who, uh, yeah, Caesars, yeah. They were, so they're, the mom, you know, was having a, a dinner for his best friend, and... They were celebrating it yesterday. And he says, Mom, but you know what? I'll be there to help you guys. You know, he didn't have to be there, guys. But he chose to be there because he really wanted to make sure that he was there to help. And he brought his he brought his best friend out of his dinner. And he says, you know, well, we're going to be there, Mom. And that was a blessing, guys. The fact that he took that time out and he brought his best friend with him and stepped out of that dinner and he told his mom hey I'm gonna I'll be back by a certain time but they actually stayed there for a long time guys and we we told them to leave a little bit earlier before they finished and Tony ended up helping out for maybe the last what 30 35 minutes yeah, or so, so. The, the only reason the cameras are able to be switched is because somebody was sitting behind in the, yeah. in the media booth so, so at first Abraham did it and then he taught his friend, but then when they had to leave, they taught Tony. Tony how to it, do it for the, yeah. So guys, it takes, it takes a team. Full to, production, man. Full production takes a team to do it. We might be a small, a smaller church, guys, 
but it takes a team. It it really takes a village to do this stuff and 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 we're so blessed. We're blessed to to have um the guys that that you know put that little technical stuff and great teacher, um somebody that really puts this stuff together and and he's Abraham's had an amazing teacher that has helped him learn a lot of this stuff and they put their brains together and Abraham's been a blessing guys and I'm, mm. I'm happy that he's growing up in that environment so I praise God for that yeah so not only that but um <clears throat> we also had a, a TV donated to us because I don't know if you guys know Sharon she has issues with her eyes seeing clarity and all we had is a little 32 inch monitor while you're on stage for you to look at mm -hmm. You know, because the people in the service, they see a huge screen with the lyrics behind her, though. And in front of her, up on the ceiling, is this little 32-inch screen. And uh, But Brother Alex brought, uh, I think, a 50 or 55. I think it's a 50. So now we're going to install that this week. So it's easier for anyone, even if I have scripture up there, to be able to see that. That's going to be really nice. And another thing, too, is I explained in the video we did at the church, but... Um, the mic issue, guys, um, I apologize. I know that we keep having a mic issue on Sundays and the mic shuts off out of nowhere and it freezes up. And Abraham literally has to unplug the USB, plug it back in. And he said it happened like seven or eight times today. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, so um, I brainstormed. I went to Guitar Center to talk to them and explain the whole situation to the sound guy. They have uh, audio professionals there. Like, if you go to the guitars, they have a guitar specialist, drum mm -hmm. specialist. That's why mm -hmm. I like Guitar Center. And I explained to him what I did. He almost laughed at the mics we were using, you know. And he says, you, you know, you can't you can't use a USB mic for 50 feet. You, you can't do that. So, you know what? We got a mic that's not going to shut off anymore on Sundays because of you guys. Because of you, man. Because I don't want the mics turning off on you. I don't want you to miss one single word of the sermons or one single, one single melody of the worship. I heard like last few weeks in the altar call or at the end, the mics just shut off. And I'm not going to just let that ride, guys. Because you guys are just as much as part of this as the people that attend. And you guys are important. You know, so, man, thank you. If, if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't have been able to do that. You know how good it felt to be like, man, yeah, we'll take that. Because we want our our life's services or, you know, anything we do to just be the best it can be for you guys. Amen. So I'm really excited for that. I, we shared that a little bit earlier, but in case you didn't watch it. Amen. So, um, with that being said, you guys ready to dive into some scripture? Yes. Let's They're just like, yes, we've been waiting a week. All last week, we didn't give you guys any scripture. We apologize, but we have scripture today. What happened? Oh. Nothing. We are going to the book of Colossians, chapter 2, two verse, 20. verse 20. Colossians, chapter 2, verse 20, and it says this. Therefore, if you died with Christ from the basic principles of the world, why, as though living in the world, do you subject yourselves to regulations? Okay, David reads out of the New King James, so I'll be reading out of the message. So then, if with Christ you've put all that pretentious and infantile religion behind you, why do you let yourselves be bullied by it? Bam. Okay, I want to talk about the context of what this, what he's talking about, but we're going to talk a little bit differently about it. But, you know, I don't like talking about a scripture without talking about the original intent because then it sounds like we're stretching scripture to fit our narrative. Yeah. Um, so actually what he's talking about here is actually other believers. He's, he's talking to other believers here, right? It says, if you died with Christ... So he's telling them, since you died, you're no longer alive. You, you're alive if you died with Christ. Because basically our old selves die, like mm -hmm. in baptism. Mm -hmm. He says, if you died from the basic principles of this world, why though, as living in the world, do you subject yourselves to regulations? He was talking to the religious people, a lot of Jewish people at that time. Paul was preaching them saying, listen, you don't have to 
live according to the Old Testament. Jesus came to fulfill the Old Testament. So he was explaining to them the gospel, what Jesus did. And a lot of Jewish people are like saying, amen, but we're still going to follow the old regulations. So Paul is telling them, he's talking to religious people, saying, why are you still living that way if you are free in Christ now? You know, so that's the original, what they were talking about. What it made me think of, though, for our day, it says, therefore, if you died with Christ. So first of all, let's, who are we talking to? We're talking to Christians. Because if you consider yourself a Christian, that means you died in Christ. That means it is no longer about you. Paul says it is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. Mm -hmm. So if somebody's watching this and they're not saved yet, this, is, this doesn't pertain to you because you're still alive in the world. But it says here, if you died with Christ from the basic principles of the world. You know why I like that? Because that means the things that meant the things that meant things about my reputation in the past or how the world saw me or whatever, that means I can't choose God and care about those things in the world. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't it seem like a lot of times Christians try to impress the world? Of course. But we look what it says. If you died with Christ from the basic principles of the world. That stuff doesn't apply. That stuff shouldn't even matter to you. That is like living in a country and saying, I want to move to that country. And that country says, the only way you can live here permanently is if you give up your citizenship of the other country. So could that, could that be a little, in right now, in these times right now, let's just say with a pandemic, uh -huh. could that be a little contradicting with the things that are taking place right now because you have um like let's just say christians churches that are following guidelines mm -hmm. let's just use that as an example you have churches and places of worship that are following guidelines right now um and then you know they're not faithless because they're following guidelines you know mm -hmm. because it's real but yet then you have people who are not following guidelines because they it's not that they're not that they're being rebellious but you know i think that they just kind of feel like um in a sense they just kind of feel like well don't you have faith you know mm -hmm. and it it kind of puts them in a very in a contradictory type of way because they just kind of feel like, well, you should have faith. Why aren't you, mm -hmm. you, you know, it's sort of in a sense, you know, I guess in a sense, you know, but at the same time, you know, I think we take as, as a, a person, as a Christian, we take the stance of responsibility, yeah, which is important. So how do you, how do you, balance that without um without justification but at the same time have that fine balance okay <clears throat> i have a i believe i have a perfect answer for that okay because every time i follow a truth or a non-truth i do what it's called i i i do what i don't know what i call it but basically i follow it down the path it takes and if it is false, it turns into a slippery slope. What I mean is sometimes when you're going down somewhere and it's muddy, you'll start sliding. So for instance, if we're going to say, well, I have faith. I have faith. I don't need to follow guidelines. Okay. So, okay. So that means you don't wear a seatbelt because that's a guideline. You don't follow street, st the lines in the street. You just drive anywhere you go because those are guidelines. Matter of fact, you don't like freeways that have guardrails because those are guidelines to keep you safe. See, it's a slippery slope when you start to say, well, I'm not going to do this, I'm not going to do that because I'm a man of faith. <clears throat> well, there's things in this world that keep us safe. So that's why I'm just like, I don't have a problem. I think I said it today in announcements. I don't have a problem with wearing a mask if it keeps us safe. 
I don't have a problem with standing six feet apart if it keeps us safe. I don't, I don't have a problem or issue with that because people are getting sick. People are sick. People we love right now have COVID. Yeah. Now, those guidelines, seat belts, guardrails, whatever, that doesn't stop me from worshiping. It's when the world says, you're either going to serve God or you're going to do this. Then that's something different. But I think guidelines are fine. There's nothing wrong. You know why? You, it's like somebody says, well, I'm a man of faith. I'm not wearing a mask. Really? Do you lock your door at night? Yeah. Why? You have faith? Why? Why not just leave your door wide open all night? Why even put the alarm? Do you have an alarm? God forbid you have an alarm because if you have an alarm, that means you don't have faith. See what I mean? It's a slippery slope. A slippery slope is you take a truth and you follow it to its end until it just gets ridiculous. Well, here's where I, I may have <clears throat> um, a little problem. I may have the problem where, you know, you come to the place of worship and you may say, hey, do you, do you mind maybe putting on a mask? And you're all like, really? And you know, a person chooses not to and will be like, hey, listen, you know, I, I'm just going to ask if you can do that because, you know, um, we want to follow guidelines because we we can run a risk of, of having to shut down if we're not following guidelines, you know. I think mm -hmm. we're, we're taking that responsibility. Mm -hmm. But I'm not... <coughs> but, but here's... Here, let me get to my point. <coughs> my point is, is that nowadays you know, it's required to go into a grocery store. You want to eat, you have to wear a mask to go into a grocery store. Um, at your place of employment, to keep your job, they require you to wear your mask. Good point. So you want to go to work, you want to have your job. So are you going to quit your job because you're required to wear a mask? And you're going to be like, I'm not going to wear my mask. So you're going to quit your job. So now you have nothing to feed your family with. So, you know, do, do you get do you get my point? Yeah, well, I want to take that further. It, it would be messed up if you come into a place of worship and you're like, I don't wear a mask. But if, if you want a burger, you'll wear a mask for that. If you want a Starbucks, you'll wear a mask for that. If you want to go get some pieces of drumstick at a grocery store, you wear a mask for that. For people and strangers you don't know. But you won't wear one in your place of worship where there is people you know and you love. You know what I mean? So I think it's like, I shouldn't have to be like, oh, the state says, the state says, no. Do you love the people in here? Can we be as safe as possible for the people in here? Because literally, there has been probably at least 10 people that were directly affected with COVID this last month. You know, so it's like, I'm not even sure if that's the point where you're, yeah, yeah you know, um, so those are the things of this world, guys, that are there to keep us safe guidelines, whether it's a COVID guideline or a safety guideline that existed five years ago, 10 years ago, mm -hmm. you know, um, in that sense, but According to the scripture, if you died with Christ from the basic principles of the world, I'm not talking about those things. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the things that this world, things that matter to people in this world that go completely against the kingdom of God. You know, myself, I came out of a gang lifestyle. There are certain things that you live and you live to the day you die. Well, you know what? I lived it until I died because I'm no longer I who live, but it's Christ who lives in me. Those rules don't apply to me because I have now left that country, burned my passport, and I belong into the kingdom of God. That stuff shouldn't affect me anymore. You know, um, there was a brother the other day, and yeah, he's a brother. And if you're watching this, man, it is what it is. You know, and I know, I don't know if you think it's funny or not, but you use Z's instead of S's because that's what Northerners did. But if you're in Christ, why are you still applying those rules from that other life? 
So which one do you belong to? That's the choice you got. That's the choice I had to make with 14 northerners around me saying I'm going to leave that place in the stretcher. And I had to make my choice. That's why it says here, if you died with Christ from the basic principles of the world. That stuff doesn't apply to you if you are if you are dead in Christ. It makes sense. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's like so then it goes, why? Why, as though living in the world, do you subject yourself to the world's regulations, to its regulations? Yeah. You know, that's why, like, I always tell people, like, let's say a couple is arguing, and, and real quick, the husband or the wife will go complain to non-believers about your situation. Hmm. And what are they going to say? Oh, heck no. Oh, leave them. Or no, you know, just let's go out. I'll, I'll introduce you to some other dude. Or I got some other guy or some other girl, this or that. That is the world's wisdom. That stuff doesn't apply to you. Yeah. Why would you take something that is holy under God and all of a sudden you're having an issue and you take it to your non-believing co-workers? Yeah, it's going to be fixed in a non-believing way. Or your non-believing brother or sister or your mom or your uncle or your dad or your best friend or whoever it is. Why? What makes you think they would have wisdom to speak into your marriage or your relationship or your way of parenting? Yeah. Why would you do that? The Bible says that people that are lost are blind. So if you find somebody blind with a walking stick, are you going to ask them for directions? Because mm. that's basically what you're doing. Heavy. The rules of this world, the regulations of this world do not apply to you. Yeah. We need to quit seeking wisdom where there's nothing but foolishness. Yeah. Yeah. Don't ask your non-believing friends for advice. Or directions. Or directions. Yeah. Or marriage advice. Or it's just that's crazy. You need to find somebody that is grounded in the word and is has been in Christ long enough to have some wisdom. You know, like like if you went to a war and somebody's telling you what to do with a brand new, no dirt, super clean camouflage on, and you got another guy that's full of mud and dirt and rips. <laughs> And he's trying to tell you how to stay alive. But this guy, his, his, his camouflage is still stiff off the rack. Mm. And this is a life or death situation. One is telling you, no, if you want to survive, do this and this and this. And this guy looks like he's been to hell and back. Says, no, man, follow me. I'll keep you alive. Who are you going to ask? Who are you going to follow? Yeah. Who are you going to follow? That's right. So you know what? You find the Christian with the ripped up Bible. The one that has all kinds of markings on it. Yeah. The one that has callous knees because they're constantly praying for people. The one that, that you can tell, man, that's the one that you ask wisdom for your marriage. That's the one you ask wisdom for your own self, your self-reflection, your self things. Somebody that's been through things. Somebody that's scarred. Somebody that, that has been to hell and high water and came back Several times. Yeah. That's the one you go to, man. That's the one. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's the same thing, you know, when I tell men, you know, and and stuff, a lot of the times they want to look for, they want to look for the woman who is all beautiful and prettied up and all of that. And they just always want to look for the greener grass and everything. And I'm like, you know, you gotta, you gotta stop looking for, for what looks good on the outside all the time, you know, and I think that that's, that's something that, unfortunately, if you're single out there, you got to look for what's in the heart, you know, mm -hmm. you have to look for what's in the heart. Um, I think God gives a man the ability to be able to, to help mold the woman that he desires, um, by speaking that beauty and life into the woman that he he really wants if if it's a, a beautiful woman that he wants 
then then that's what you're gonna get but it all comes with you know with desiring that and and really truly finding that in her heart first um all of that comes in time guys but find that in the heart before appearance a woman can have beauty on the outside but the heart cannot be in the right place so just you know really take your time um, and stop looking for the outward appearance because I really believe that God gives you the ability to really mold that woman to what it is that you want um, in prayer and through really seeking God first mm -hmm. because by seeking God he will give you all the desires of your heart you better believe me that he will um, that woman you can have the most plain Jane woman trust me and by you speaking beauty, speaking life into her and speaking all of that, she will become that woman that you want her to be. Trust me, because when you tell a woman that she's beautiful, when you tell her all these things, it's exactly what she becomes. She becomes that rose, that rosebud, and she blossoms mm -hmm. because it's you investing into her. That's what she becomes. She becomes bold. She becomes strong. She becomes beautiful. She becomes confident because you know why? Because she has a man who believes that in her. So don't be in a rush because of the first thing that you see on the outer shell. You got to, you got to truly believe and, and look at what's in the inside, not on the outside. And I know, I know brothers, I know some brothers that, I don't know, I'm not with them all the time, but I think many times maybe they get passed on, you know, maybe, you know, somebody else is more fit, somebody else has a little more, more swag and more whatever, you know what I mean? And, <laughs> and you have no idea, these men, their hearts are golden. Yeah. I'm just like, that's crazy. Because there's some brothers I know. You know, um, one of them is Brother Edwin. He has been single, non-married, since he got out of prison. This dude will literally give a shirt off his back. I'm telling you, this man, I don't understand. I don't think he's an ugly guy. You met him. I don't know. I don't think he's an ugly guy. But he's not all out there. He's not. He just works and studies his word and goes to church. You know why? Because I believe that the Lord's gonna the Lord the Lord has reserved him for a for a good a good woman of a good woman of God. He has stayed single he's probably got out two years after no, maybe two or three years after me. So he's been out maybe seven years, six and a half years. Brother has been single. He works, bought his house, he works so much, has no kids. No kids, no wife or nothing. He bought a house. And then he's just in his house by himself. That's why he's like, man, if you ever come through, through Bakersfield, man, just stop by. <laughs> he is literally, one time, he left his key because he was at work. He will leave his key just so I can um, go in there and rest. Wow, yeah. this is better than Christian. <laughs> what is it called? The Christian uh, hookup.com? What is it called? I don't know. <laughs> Christian Mingle? Christian Mingle. He has no idea I'm saying this, so. <laughs> so uh, some sister might be like, who's this Edwin brother? <laughs> so, hey, if you're single, you might as well just let him know. He might just so, put you on the devotional here. <laughs> that's funny. But, and, and not only that, there's brothers even here that, that come to our church. I'm just like, man, this dude is golden. Like, man. I know. You we know, got some if, amazing women if, too, if man. If women just knew your heart, man, it's like, pff, that's crazy. And and I'm sure there's sisters that are yeah, just absolutely. beautiful, the golden, beautiful like sisters. just, you know, but whatever. That's somebody's loss is somebody's game. You know, so. Absolutely. Um, how did we turn this into a, I don't know, first, <laughs> what happened? I don't know, but you know what? I think maybe somebody somebody needed to hear it. Yeah. You know what? But praise God. You know, I, I, I just think it's 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 important um that people just hear whatever the Lord wants to speak yeah. out of our out of our mouths, you know? Yeah. But um guys, like like seriously, uh 
I think every everybody has an opportunity to speak life into whom it is that they desire. I think that's 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 important. And um, I mean, look look what the Lord did in our lives. You know, I mean, He did something amazing. And I think that uh, I think that's important. I think we were just finishing up the scriptures. That's that's yeah. what we were doing. Well, guys, I told you we we're gonna bring some scripture. We brought it. Then we start talking about Edwin, you know, <laughs> you know, and Edwin, you know how I always talk about uh, the Muppet Johnny. So uh, just to kind of put it in context, it was always us three together, me, Johnny and Edwin. There was a couple other brothers, too, but the core was me, the Muppet, I mean, Johnny and Edwin, you know, and all three of us have got out still serving God. You know, and that's the beautiful thing, because most guys, you hear people that serve God in prison and they left. They say there's a saying is that you leave the Bible at the gate on the way out, mm. you know, but I'm so blessed to to know that the two brothers I was closest to are still serving God Amen. years and years later after getting out, you know, so. All right, guys. And they're well, amazing guys, guys. I've gotten to meet. I've gotten both to meet of them. them. Yeah, well, a few actually more, actually, yeah. too. And oh, you met Lorenzo. I've met uh, the uh, other not not Nacho. Nacho, and then Francisco, mm -hmm. and I've gotten to meet Jose. a lot of them. Yeah, I've gotten to meet a lot of them, guys, yeah. and still serving God. Man, all of them, and I'm just really, really blessed. And you know, I have nothing but good things to say about all of them, but. Edwin, Edwin's amazing. Every single time that we see him, he always has a little bag full of <laughs> snacks and. You know when you visit your abuela and she does not let you leave unless you sit down and eat. Or you, or she packs you up a bag of snacks and everything. That's Edwin. Ed, that's Edwin. Edwin always has a bag. My mom does that to me, and then Edwin has that for us. He always has drinks in there and and nuts and. He'll go through his pantry fruits. and start. Filling it, his fruits bags. and everything, and I feel like I can. We can never leave without having snacks and everything in there, and it's such a blessing. And he reminds me so much of like, like an older brother or something. And I'm like, oh man, thanks, you know. Yeah, he's actually younger. <laughs> is he? He is. You know, he's my age, as a matter of fact. Oh. Yeah. yeah, he's he's my age. He's in his we're the er same age. early forties. Yeah, we're the same age. And uh, so you know, he bought a house with. I think a two or three bedroom on purpose. You know why he bought it? He says, in case the brothers are passing through. Yeah. He was that way you awesome. go. You guys, that way you have a bed to stay at. You have somewhere to stay at, you know? So I, I yeah. miss him, man. I, I got to see him. Yeah. Now I miss him. Yeah, we're going to have to visit what, him. Put Muppets on. What about me? <laughs> Tell him he should meet us there. We should all meet. He won't do it. Uh -huh. Anyways, guys, we love you guys. Have a blessed day. We will see you guys tomorrow, okay? All right, guys. Bye, guys. Bye.